Yeah. Are the Tajiks actually a term that's not particularly used in Afghanistan? But these are Persian speakers, they're Sunnis. The Pashtuns are also Sunnis. Another important thing, whenever I make a generalization, Pashtuns are Sunni, Tajiks are Sunni, an Afghan can raise his hand and say, ah, I know a Shia Tajik. Or there is in the Northwest Frontier Shia Pashtuns. True. All right. In Afghanistan and most of this, there's an exception for everything. The question is, under what circumstances is it important? Tajiks, Persian speakers. The interesting thing is, the Persian speakers have run the governments of Afghanistan for centuries. Why? Because, as the British first said when they entered Afghanistan from India, and the question is, what language should we teach our, our officials going into India? They said Persian. It is the French of the East. From Turkey, the Ottoman Empire, all the way over to northern India, the Mughal Empire, they kept their documents and diplomatic correspondence in Persian. So educated people spoke Persian. And what happens to Pashtuns who come out of the mountains or out of the deserts and into the cities and into government? They become Persianized over time. Ethnically, they're Pashtun, but culturally, they're Persianized. So when we're talking about ethnic differences, the kind of Pashtun that you see in the Fatah, federally administered tribal district of, Afghanistan, uh, of Pakistan, and that you see in Kabul or Kandahar, are culturally quite different, although they're the same ethnic group. Again, different time type, types of lifestyle. Tajiks make up the merchant class. They make up most of the clerics. But they also have a very large rural agricultural population. What's their population? Probably 30% of Afghanistan. Again,